Today we brought in master suspension mechanics to break down spectacular suspension fails from the internet. First clip. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh man. Of course we start He's out. He's safe. He's safe. He's got a shield. Everything's all right. Whoa, yeah, it works. Lucky. You might not come home one day if you try to do that. I've seen one going to people's chests. I've seen like all kinds of crazy stuff. It scares me as of today trying to do that. Yeah. My name is Lorenzo Hicks. I'm the CEO of Icebox Customs. I've been doing air suspension and coilovers for about 26 years Ooh. now. And I love what I do. That looks like an OEM shock and spring. Mm -hmm. Probably 150, 200 pounds per inch spring. Preloaded like looks like two or three inches. That's like what, 300 plus pounds of force just he just got super lucky. I'm Odie Bakshis. I am the owner of Field Suspension and also a two-car professional race team that competes in Formula Drift. There are tools and stuff you can use yeah. to actually suppress that spring. So you can just go to an auto parts store mm -hmm. and you can rent that tool. Usually it's free. You pay a deposit, you use it, and you bring it back. Plus you get the smile after that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get to keep your you teeth. You get the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the next clip. Damn. I mean, like, lack of suspension. <laughs> oh no! And he got a chicken. Oh! Bag. What? That, like, the first, that doesn't look real from the outside. Well, <laughs> it could have airbags on it that's all the way maxed up, really? or somebody needs some shocks. I've seen people blow out shocks and then put wood and stuff in it to make it home, but nothing like this. That, that's crazy. It looks like a video yeah, game. Yeah, there's no <laughs> suspension in that. That's yeah. gonna be all steel. The reason the car flew up into the air is because that energy got stored into the tire and then it had to go somewhere and it went right back into the ground and pushed the car off the freaking ground. The spring temporarily absorbed the energy, but all that energy will literally get pushed back out of the spring. That's where the shock, the actual hydraulic function comes into play. And it takes that like mechanical energy and turns it into heat. Here's a monotube shock. This is like the, the heart of the, the coil over right here. It's the cartridge, that's what we call it. Mm -hmm. So you got the shock body, you got the shock shaft. This is filled with fluid, hydraulic fluid. And as the shock travels through, like on the compression stroke, this piston right here is pretty damn good seal. So on the compression stroke, the fluid goes through the center of the shaft, gets spit out of the holes that are right there inside of the shock shaft. And basically you're allowing fluid to bypass the piston that's generating all the force and it gets squirted out right here. We have all kinds of cool tricky ways to slow down the fluid to make it have more resistance to flow through this piston. So it's not just like free flowing. And that's what makes the shock either stiffer or softer. After it compresses, the stored energy in the spring has to go somewhere. The spring pushes back and it rebounds back out. Same thing on the rebound. This piston has to allow all the fluid to get back from one side of the piston to the other side. Mechanical energy turns into heat and the shock body dissipates the heat. Well, we've learned a lot so far. Let's see what else we're learning in the next clip. Oh, those are some tennis balls. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a reason. They're in tennis ball jail. They've been bad. <laughs> Say you got it slammed, you got a couple people in it, uh -huh. and it's sagging down. You put the balls in there to uh, help it out a little bit, pretty much. Imagine a dog getting under there, be like, ooh, and then it's just like trying to rip one of those out. <laughs> Dogs keep attacking my truck. I don't know what's going on. At the track, we employ similar techniques to avoid time of swapping out a whole spring. Like we're doing back-to-back -back practice runs, trying to dial in the car, right? So we put in spring rubbers, that's what we call them. Mm. And we essentially take a piece of rubber and we put it in between a coil and we disable basically this whole coil. Mathematically, you calculate a spring rate by adding up the amount of coils, the coil diameter, and there's like a variable that you use for the spring strength. And if you disable a, an actual coil, it's very evident that you increase the spring rate. Mm -hmm. This is a hybrid model right here, because you see a tennis ball that's bulging in between the coils. That's yeah. kind of disabling part of that coil. Uh -oh. But then on top of it, he's got an air spring because of all the other tennis balls being in the inside diameter. I mean, this guy's just... On it. I just learned about a term, burnt springs. What exactly is that? Burnt spring, I, I always call it torch spring is what I call it. So we take the spring on the car, we take a torch and we heat it up till it gets red. And then we take the jack and we drop the car down and it starts to compress. But, so you're like metal working it to yeah. be a lower, like a smaller spring. Right, absolutely. Well, always just thought cutting springs. Well, you good. never thought about it, but. Sandro. What's up, guy? Hey, how's it going? My dude, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> you guys gotta check out what I fucked up today. I was working on that guy's car. Oh. And I was just trying to get it a little bit lower, but uh -huh. you guys gotta check out this next clip right here. Thanks to Slime for sponsoring today's video. I promise, I promise, I will not be late. What was that noise? Nothing. Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? Roadside help said five hours. Nothing I can do. Hold, please. Please, please. 
Please! Ah! Don't get upset, everything's fine, because I have slime. All I gotta do is connect the Smart Spare Ultra to the tire valve stem, power it up with a 12 volt outlet, turn on the car, turn on the slime, and I'm back on the road in no time. <sighs> this is taking forever. Nope. The Smart Spare Ultra fully repairs the tire in just 10 minutes. Music to my ears. Ah, uh, how much longer? Done. I told you I wasn't gonna be late. I'll see you soon. When you've got the Smart Spare Ultra from Slime, you'll never lose time. To learn more, click the link below. Tony, look at this oh. Yes, I did this. <laughs> that's me, that's me. Yo. You like the like perfect <laughs> <laughs> the boat's right, yeah. but look at that spring. That the spring looks a little sideways. Yeah. <laughs> I know more, I know more, I know more. I picked up a little too bad. My idea was like, let me get it a little bit lower so I can see the stands, yeah. you know? Traditionally, if you cut it, the spring doesn't stay flat. It'll be on that little tip. Mm -hmm. So what you normally do, you burn it so it comes back down, and then you shave it to get this flat spot, right? In your Miata, I didn't have that space. So I figured maybe if I burn this side and this mm -hmm. side, it'll pancake down and it'll work, right? <laughs> Couldn't reach it, so I, <laughs> I hit this side and then I tried to hit this side. But you probably hit, hit more close I to this side. I hit more <laughs> this side, so the springs start going like this. Like, look at that. Yeah, that doesn't look right. No, it, it's not right. It's not right. I think it's just time for some cold. <laughs> but if you do it right, I mean, it works. It works, it works when you do it well, right. Well, you don't want to stay in one area. You kind of want to actually yeah, yeah, swing you, it. Yeah. You want to go here and here, yeah. so it just it does this, like bam, bam. But now the, the beast is outside. <laughs> Woo! Dude! <laughs> what the f***? Look at this. Look at that thing. Oh Look at that fit, man! I fucking love it! Oh my god! Ah. <laughs> if you guys would like Jimmy and Sandro to show that when it's finished to Bob Hull, let us know in the comments below. Oh, I, I want to yeah. see his reaction. I think they're going to be interested. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm out of here. Deuces, guys. Stop the next Bye, bud. Let's check out the next clip. Ooh. What's going to happen? Ooh. I was gonna say that wheel looked kind of. Yeah, that <laughs> probably came around the corner, hit a dip, and then just kept on going. And like, oh, it's okay. Like, it's, no, it's not. No, okay. something's uh, about to bust. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a ballsy mother to get in one of these cars. And the thing with rally racing is, you can only stop at the next stage. There's no pit because okay. you're going along one continuous road. And there's no bathroom either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorenzo, how would a rally car's suspension be different from a normal road going car? Reinforced suspension. Mm -hmm. Your tie rods have to be reinforced. Mm -hmm. The shafts have to be almost bulletproof. That's an inverted strut that failed. In a McPherson shock and rally application, you need a lot of strength because the shock is the upper control arm as well. So like it takes all the, not just the vertical force, it takes all the horizontal force. So the shock shaft doesn't freaking bend every time you hit turns or ruts or whatever. They take the shock, they put it upside down, mm. and then they have the whole shock go in and out of like basically another shock body. That way the shock shaft itself isn't bearing any of the loads. It's like literally a housing with Teflon line bushings, top and bottom, that support all the lateral loads. So what happened is the shock shaft actually broke and it allowed the actual insert, we call it an insert, an inverted insert came out and the shock now is two pieces. And since the McPherson shock is the upper control arm, now the wheel is not being held in and it just gave out. As strong as inverted shocks are, I freaking hate them because they're just <laughs> a nightmare. As that drives in and out, this shock the tube or the, the body that has the two bushings, it's, it's just grease. It's really not like, it's, it's kind of like a very barbaric system. Mm. Um, because the grease is the only thing that's lubricating these two bushings. The bushings have Teflon on them that wears off, the grease wears down, then you start getting a lot of friction of this thing going in and out. Uh, okay. It's like a very uh, it adds serviceable, a lot of maintenance, yeah. Mm. The owner of the Ford Mustang in the next clip modified their car to add only a modest 80 horsepower, but let's see what happened to their suspension. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot of play. 
that's too much. Yeah, that, that's yeah. too much. It's almost like it's, it was loose, but it's not. That's that, normal. I've seen a lot worse. I mean, kind of embarrassed to say, but that kind of stuff though, like sometimes might yield to wheel hop, axles will get screwed up. You'll just have failures that are preventable. But props to that guy, making power and putting it down, man. Yeah, he put it. Jiggling is all stuff. Definitely put it down and jiggle it around. When people do mods on their motor, they should upgrade the suspension before mm -hmm. new polyurethane bushings, different shocks is to handle all that power. Mm -hmm. That should be the first thing they should do is get that taken care of, especially on like a Mustang because you're they're notorious for swinging at mm -hmm. the rubber bushings that you see there that are a piece of rubber with a metal sleeve that's impregnated into the middle of it and it's supposed to isolate any metal to metal vibration any metal to metal contact in the perfect world the rubber durometer is stiff enough to where it moves a little bit but here it's probably causing some clunking and some vibration because it's actually ramming into areas where it's metal to metal contact or really close to it there's there's two routes you can go when it comes to bushings oem would be the middle right where it's comfort but also enough performance then there's solid obviously you want solid if you don't want any of the force or energy going anywhere but the actual wheel and you want on the softer end if you're not abusing the vehicle or it's not making enough power to actually blow through the mechanical travel that the bushing has because then it's going to transmit less vibration to the vehicle it'll feel floaty like a cadillac <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, going too soft, just like with shocks, is a bad thing too. Because yeah. if you go too soft, you blow through the mechanical travel that's in that system. And then it's even worse than maybe having a solid mounted subframe because now you actually have like a jackhammer effect. Now you actually have two surfaces that have like a little bit of space to accelerate through the movement and hits, it bounces back, hits again, and it's just like a non-stop cycle. So too soft is not good, too firm of a bushing is not good either. You gotta find a balance. This guy doesn't really have the balance down. So make sure you get your suspension worked out first before adding a little bit of power. How about we head over to the next clip? Let's go. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a Corolla. Head Whoa. Head. <laughs> so this is the opposite of what we saw earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that looks fun. That looks like a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. It's fun to all experiment. spring, no shock, right? There. Right, exactly. This is the exact opposite of what we saw earlier. This is all spring, zero shock. <laughs> I would never take my friends around no, something not, like not that. No, no. They don't want to ride. They would get seasick. Yeah, they're like, man, let me out. Please let me out of here. You when you see people going on the highway in the rear. Yeah, and it's just like yeah. floating. Yeah, it's just the shocks. Are <laughs> just replace them. They're like 40 bucks a piece. Yeah. So on. And it's a good example of it not just oscillating nonstop. It's actually running out of mechanical travel, hitting the bump stop, which is violently making it go up into the rebound stroke, and it's topping out. It's running out of mechanical travel on the upstroke, therefore it's lifting the wheel off the ground. He's lucky that's front wheel drive, or else he'd be in a whole lot. It'd be even more fun if it was rear wheel drive, for sure. <laughs> yeah. A shock doesn't go to hell that quickly. If you get a, like a leaking shock, it's gonna take time for it to get enough fluid out of there to where throughout its whole stroke, it'll be uncontrollable like that. I've seen it happen on like rally cars, right? Because if it's hammering to the point where it's topping out super violently, eventually it will break that off and then it'll come apart and then you have like mechanical failure. The car, the shock will come apart on some suspension systems that will make the wheel like literally fold out. So that that's kind of like the, the riskiest business that he's dealing with right there is the shock physically coming apart as he's having fun. Well, let's bounce ourselves into the next clip. Are you up to bitty boy? Here we go. Just trying to clean this. This guy's got a good strap, beard. So he knows what he's doing. It, but there's so much stuff under here, I can't even think to wind this thread down. Is yet. that just like so leaking? Like it looks yeah, like. It's leaking from the. Yeah, it's, got, it's a gas drain that's leaking from the top. So yeah, now we're just trying to clean all the mud out oh, of these threads. Oh God, you gotta. So we can adjust. That looks obnoxious. Yeah, Why wouldn't you just use a power washer? Oh, for yeah, that? That was the well, you really can. You're gonna have to use a. We have a brush, a certain brush that you can use. Okay. And it has these bristles in it. Yeah. I've seen one trick used, is duct tape. I, I never heard of that. Yeah, you duct tape this, so then this doesn't have- All that nice- None of the dirt can get in there. And then when you want to adjust it, you just take the duct, duct tape off, and you adjust, and put some put more, duct more duct tape. duct tape on it. Yeah. You just taught me something. And I've been doing no, this for a long time. And you just taught me that. Let's yeah. go. Wow. <laughs> yes. Toyota Lexus extended tie rods for under $20. Sounds pretty cheap. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to extend your tie rods All right. on any Lexus platform. Oh, this is a car. Yeah, okay. okay, only using lug nuts and a bolt from a store. I've never seen anybody do something like this. That's crazy. Oh. But why would you do this? Whoa. So, <laughs> I guess, okay. I guess that works. That, that, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's definitely a drift guy. Oh, it's a guy. drift thing. Yeah. 
Drifting started out as a grassroots sport. You do it for cheap and you do stuff like this so you can just get out there on the weekend yeah. and swing the car. This right here is stress relief. This yeah. is working hard all week mm -hmm. and then saying, you know what? I, I just need to, to, to clear my mind. Yeah. And that's what this is right That's here. awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Eventually you want to get nice tire rods that are extended. And sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. Because it could get kind of pricey. This up. is where you start. My main concern is the grade of the qual like the hardware. Usually like rule of thumb is that you need enough engagement on the actual hardware. So if it's a Lexus SC300 or SC400, which is what it looks like, it's gonna be an M14 inner tie rod. So it has to engage 14 millimeters into that lug nut. I don't think that's engaging 14 millimeters on both sides, dude. But I mean, the, the thought process is there. It's just he needs a longer lug nut or okay. just buy a threaded rod or buy a rod and thread it yourself. I okay, can't. so yeah. good, but yeah, I'm bad. I mean, it's cool that he got very much off the shelf stuff. You right. know, he didn't like look at a McMaster catalog and was like, oh, I gotta buy this, this and that. He like one stop at a freaking hardware store, or not even a hardware store, an auto parts store, and yeah. he's got it done, so. On to the next. So when you bring these magnets together, magnets. they push each other away up until a certain point, and then they slightly magnets. shift relative to each other. So now I guess we bring them together and see what happens. Is this his version Figure of Figure out whether the suspension is going to work or not. What? Fantastic. You got me on this one. I, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> the rear end is hopping like crazy. Because they're just smacking it against each other. But generally speaking, it is getting the job done. I've never seen anything like this before. So what country is he at to get these military grade freaking magnets and just play with them? That's rad. Because like, <laughs> this is not like a normal, like, go to Hobby Lobby <laughs> right, <laughs> magnet. Right. So yeah. it's pretty rad. I mean, it's just, almost science, to be honest with you. Do you think that would, you? could be the future of suspension? I, <laughs> Yeah, yep. You could, you could see a future where we're using yeah, magnets. because it's crazy how they make the trains that are on magnets. That's true. So this stuff like this is like, he's trying to figure this out to, He's yeah. a pioneer. Well, this guy's onto something, man. This would be cool if there was a spring and a shock, and then this was the bump stop, right? Right. So it goes to infinity, but it like ramps up fairly quickly. And if you can apply current to the magnets, you could have like basically essentially a bump stop that's electrically tunable mm. based on like maybe the, the road surface or something. Right. So it's cool that people have this kind of stuff to play with, you know, and experiment. Because this is how we come up with really cool This next clip shows what brilliant engineers who are not working out of a garage in Russia can do with the concept of electromagnetic suspension. And most surprising of all, the technology we're about to see was invented by a company famous for making speakers. Let's take a look. All right, Porsche goes over some bumps. Now we have an LS. Bose suspension. Whoa. I didn't even know Bose sold suspension. I know they sold speakers. This was a experimental piece that they made. Okay. They deemed it too expensive to make and too heavy. So they canceled it. They canceled much. it. Okay. But I mean, look how cool that looks. I mean, I mean that's comfortable, right? Yeah, now. and I, I love too that they use this Lexus because if you remember, they had the ad with the, the champagne glasses stacked on the engine. So you'd think the story would end there with Bose suspension. But in 2017, the patent it was bought up by Clear Motion, who has sold 3 million units to the Chinese company Neo to use in their flagship car. Wow. And so let's check out a clip of it actually on one of the Neo cars today. No way. They used the champagne. The bottle? That's kind of like a the glass. Comes full circle. Every bump. That's a good day. Right that's there. that's that's some good suspension. Yeah, that's a good day. And the, and the only reason they're going this slow is because if they drove faster, the glass would blow over. <laughs> that's incredible. And, and it's really cool to think like this stuff has been around and has been being used and no one else bought into it. Suspension's come a long way. Yeah, I do testing for airlift. R&D is R&D cool. is just It awful. powers this whole industry. Yeah, it really does. Shocks, they became mainstream or used like in the 1930s. So it's only been like a hundred years. So now we need like something else that's even crazier and newer, hence this. It's a new century. Things are changing, people. Having your suspension blow out on you is bad enough, but what do you do if it happens when you're hundreds of miles away from civilization? Click here to find out. Odie, thank you so much for coming out. Hey. Lorenzo, thank you for coming on the show and teaching me a thing or two about suspension. This has been RMS. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one. Peace. Bye-bye.